Good morning and happy Wednesday. Welcome back to the Daily Grind. I'm your host, Chump Change. This is live and recorded. For anybody that might be new here, what we typically do is go over crypto news in the space. I update myself, bring you guys along for the ride. Let's see who's here. Mr. Crypto Mikel in the house. I'm DJ right. Mines, good to see you, buddy. Dan R. Rob Mines. We have Dakota Miner in the house. Uh, Dumpster Fire, good to see you. DHJ, good to see you as well. Carl Coat, Alex, we have Ursa, Steven Cicero, all set. Tim I Am Crypto, good morning. Big Black, good to see you, buddy. We have Charles Harris, uh, Anthony Zanizzo, what's up, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Anybody else I may have missed? I apologize. Green Hash, good to see you, buddy. All right, let's get into this. Dude, Bitcoin is looking like today. It looks like BTC is at 69,105. Looks like we have a little bit of a pullback from yesterday, right? Or the other day, actually. It was over 70K. I wonder if we're going to have another crazy run up just before the halving, I guess. We'll have to see what everything's going to say in the news today. We have Ethereum at 3517. Let's see what else we got. Uh, nothing else really jumping at me, but we have Solana actually down a little bit today. 168 bucks. Let's see. Dot is down a bit to $8.38. We have Matic at 88 cents. ADA is at 57 cents. Damn, should buy some more of that today, to be honest. Uh, Caspa is down a bit at 13.4, 13 cents. Let's see. Um, BCH actually. Oh man, that dropped about 100 bucks. That's crazy. 610. All right, that's almost 10 percent. Almost 10 percent down on BCH. ETC is at 32 bucks. ARB is at a dollar 45. Everything's having a decent pullback. You know what, guys? We can't go up forever. We do have to have pullbacks right dogecoin even though it's in the red it's still 18 cents it had a little bit of a pullback but it's not uh doesn't really seem to be that much to me all right let's move on to crypto bubbles if you guys have any questions obviously just at me in the chat what's up mr alien black good to see you buddy mr pringle and peter good to see you man all right uh let's see biggest loser of the day seems to be gala gala 13.2 percent down five cents ranked 64th out of top 100 we have ckb is actually up if anybody's mining with uh what is it, the k7 the nervos network there is up 14.1 percent at three cents three seven we have say down 8.1 percent to 66 cents we have ena which is athena up 8.9 percent to a dollar 36 teo which is bit and sore or bit tensor however you're supposed to say it uh ranked 30 Again, up 8.7% to $623. Crazy. Uh, let's see. Whiff. Dog whiff hat. Ooh. That took a little bit of a little bit of a sheet right there. $3.49. Look at that. What do you guys think? Should you buy into this now? I still can't believe it has a $3.48 billion market cap. That is crazy to me. <laughs> so crazy. BCH again down 8.7%. Over here, six dollars and eight bucks um honestly it's just a normal red day we have render down to nine dollars nine dollars nine cents might be a good buy on that one fetch let's see fetch ai is down 6.1 percent two dollars 51 cents yeah man nothing else really like jumping out at me maybe aptos down a little bit 12 dollars down 12.8 percent all right flashbang fear and greed index looking like a 78 anything over 75 is usually you know be greedy when people are fearful and be fearful when people are greedy but at the same time we're going into a having it's a very big move for bitcoin and uh you know what right now I, I feel like this whole area anywhere between 60 and like i don't even know 85 is now like just neutral there's no it's like comfortable here i don't get it anyways all right top 10 coins buy coin market cap over on coin gecko we have Bitcoin again at 69,000, Ethereum, Tether, BNB, Solana, XRP, Lido Staked Ether, USDC, and Do oh, sorry, Dogecoin and Toncoin. Toncoin again in the top 10, which is crazy. Crazy. $23 billion market cap. We have Cardano kicked down to 11th place. Again, I'll continue to say it. I have no affiliation with Cardano. I don't even have a big bag of it, but I think it's a layup, 6x at least, in the bull run. Right, we have 2017 bull run, 2021 bull run, and its all-time high was three dollars and nine cents. Every bull run, it ends up running, and we've made higher lows. So you guys do what you will. I think I'm gonna get some more today, or maybe tomorrow, depending, depending if I have any 
extra funds because I bought some more yesterday, actually. So that was clearly not the best decision, but hold on long term and we will make out in the end. That's the uh, that's the goal, right? Avalanche, 47 bucks. As of right now, Avalanche has been dropping down the pegs a little bit. Shiba still holding strong, actually, in 13th. That's crazy. $16 billion market cap. I wonder if we're going to have another pop with the meme coins. What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat. I'm fearful after eating Taco Bell last night. Says <laughs> the one who was. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> that's, that's an unfortunate day for you, sir. <laughs> All right, 27th place, Ethereum Classic. We have Filecoin. Max Voltage thinks this one's a sleeper. I'm not sure about it. I don't, I don't like the chart, but I, it's like a am indecisive about it. But look at this all-time high. 236 bucks. Crazy. It's only at $8 right now. So I don't know. I don't know. You guys do what you will with that. Uh, let's see. Scrolling down a bit. Render again, a little bit of a pullback here. Let's see. What's Render looking like? For the max chart. This one's consistently been climbing. And uh, I think, I mean, nobody knows it's going to happen, right? Uh, all these coins. Oh, no, they're not all circulating. Man, I was going to say. All right, so we have 381 million coins out. Total supply is 532. Uh, I mean, I don't know. $3 billion market cap. What do you guys think? 3.4? What could we do? What can we do? You guys think this one's going to continue to go up? Is this goodbye good buy right now on render? 37. I know these charts are ass, but just looking at it, looks pretty decent. Hedera is probably going to be with those, one of those ones that will pump with the altcoins. I mean, all the altcoins realistically are going to pump, but what's this all-time high? Hedera, 56 cents, 82% down. Let's go to the max chart. Yeah, 2021, this one pumped too, so this could be a good one. Who knows? Got higher lows, so that's good, right? I don't know what that circle is. That's circle. What's that circle mean? Does anybody know what that circle means on CoinGecko? Or is that like the lowest point to cycle or something? Weird. Strange. All right, let's see. Anything else? Caspa, 13, 4, 5. Let's see. Max chart. I still feel like it's gearing up. I think it's coming. Like, if you look, if you took a line and drew it down, right? It clearly broke it, but I think it's going to retest that line and then see ya. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I think Casper's going to do good things, but nonetheless, let's move on to the mining segment of things. You guys know, like the timestamp, this stuff, see where we were a year from now. We have the KS5 Pro 21 terahash unit. Again, Casper Miner is making $125.44 a day. We have the KS5 20 terahash unit making $119 a day. We have the Alethium Gold Shell Box. This thing's going for $15,000. Gross. Absolutely gross. But you're getting 36 Alethium a day. $117. It's crazy profitable on that little machine. But for that price, nah, not for me. <laughs> I would just buy the Alethium. Just buy the Alethium. That's my opinion. We have Ice, Ice River. KS5L 12 terahash unit making $67.84 a day. I'm going to be real. I think all of these units, you should just buy uh, the coin. That's just my opinion right now. I don't think it's time to buy. Not the miners. It's going to get way harder to, uh, let's see, way harder to uh, accumulate this way, right? It's only going to get worse and worse. More machines come out. Uh, what are you saying? It's the logo grayed out. What are you saying, Crypto KJ? circle is the logo i'm so confused i'm so confused what are you guys saying in the chat uh let's see what do you think about ckb it's almost back at all-time highs is it really is it really let's see nervos what's all-time high oh wow it's only 15 percent down from all-time high is that four cents look at that Four cents is all-time high. Oh, damn. Why is CKB popping, though? What's making it pop? What's making it pop? I wonder. I wonder. Um, Let's see. All right. Windminer K9. We're going to move on. 
Oh, actually, hold on. Sorry. The IB Link BMKS Max with 11 Terra Hash Unit make it $58 a day. Wind Miner K9 make it $57 a day. We have, let's see, the KS3 A Terra Hash Unit from Ice River, $42.99 a day. The K7, $34.66 a day. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's really profitable, actually. Nice. I'm not a huge fan of Nervo, so never. I don't really care about it, to be honest, but uh, sweet. Like, hey, listen, if it's profitable, mine it. Why not? And then swap it into Bitcoin or something. Whatever's uh, whatever's going to hold its value. I mean, but listen, all these altcoins are all going to pump. Altcoin season is going to be nuts this time around. Let's see. CKB always pops because of the Chinese investors. You know what? That's a good point. That's a good point. Because don't they? Have, yeah, they have a... I forget what it was. They have to do something to do with cell phones. CKB. Am I wrong? Over there in China or something. I, th I feel like it was some sort of cellular stuff. Correct me if I'm wrong, fully electric. We have the KS3 M6 terahash unit, 29 bucks a day, almost 30 bucks a day. The X16P looks like that thing's making $24.09 a day. We got the Alpha Packs uh, DG1 11 giga hash miner. This is the merge miner. I think it's LTC and Doge, if I'm not mistaken. $21 a day, almost 22 bucks a day. Not too bad. The L7, even with the pullback. Actually, what was Litecoin at? I didn't even read Litecoin. Litecoin, 96 bucks. All right, so it's under 100 bucks now. But this thing is still killing it at $16.88 a day. Hey, and 10 cents kilowatt hour. Shout out to Terra Hosting. Merge mining, Dogecoin and Litecoin. If I was mining with this machine, let's just check real quick, right? Look at my electric rate. It's 30 cents. Let's just, let's glitch this thing out real quick. All the way up to 30. Want to throw up? Blech. Where's the L7 go? Where does the L7 go? Let's see. Oh my God, I'd only make a dollar a day. <laughs> oh my gross. Oh, that's disgusting. Look at that. Good Mernin to you, Oval Tech. That's awful. Oh my God. <laughs> um, that's why I host. All my stuff is hosted. All of it, except for the KS Zeros, which they won't take. They need to fix that. They need to take my X16P. Oh, sorry. No, my X16Q, rather. Not my X16P. X16Q is that. I just shut that off. I'm, I'm done mining at my house. So I'm going to have to figure out a spot for those to go. Uh, let's see. This is it right here. Jazz Miner X16Q she would be making $8.14 a day. I'm not even going to change it again because I know it's negative here at my house. So unless I can start running that shit on solar, I ain't doing it. But I am going to be revamping all of my KS Zeros into the solar trailer. And I actually... You know what? I might do that today for a video for tomorrow because I won't be here tomorrow morning. I have an appointment at 8 a.m. So I have to be out and early out and at it early tomorrow morning. We have the Ice River KS1, one tera hash unit, make it $4.87 a day. Bro. Oh, that's gross. Woo. That's so bad. What's the KS2? KS2 is making nine bucks a day. Oh, my God. Woo. That's terrible. That's really bad. That's really bad. As much as you talk about the L7, they should be plugging you on L9 info. Yeah, for real, says Alien Black. Dude, I don't even know if they're coming out with an L9. But you guys got to think about it, right? The only reason I would say they're probably not going to come out with an L9 is Bitmain has no competition. There's no reason to compete with yourself. So they're not going to they're not going to make an L9 unless something else better comes out than their L7. And when that moment happens, then they'll drop the L9. Do you know what I mean? There's just no point. There's no point of competing with yourself. It really isn't. I bought my first 400 watt solar panel. Dude, hell yeah. Next level tech, dude. It's it's a learning curve for sure. So just go slow. Don't burn yourself down. This can be dangerous, especially with batteries. All right. I just remember KS0 Pro. You guys see a dollar and two cents a day. It's getting, it's getting bad. It's getting bad. I'm making like maybe 50 cents on these units i got eight of them running right here warming my studio as of right now this is kind of cold in the basement uh doge hold on gold shell mini doge three 500 mega hash unit if i didn't even know they had a mini doge three 74 cents Ugh. all right anyways let's move on to gpus see what gpus are looking like all right nothing new it looks like iron fish and aspa classic are on the top of the charts pyron for the 4080 super I'm still mining Pyron Hash over to Unminable for Caspa because I think Caspa has the best best chance to completely explode, but we'll see what happens. 3090 over here, mining Conflux and Radiant. Radiant is going through a halving 
soon actually if you guys didn't know 3090 ti next to raven next to Inclore. interesting able on the a5000 does anybody have an a5000 anybody anybody oh it's iron fishing graham too sorry yeah iron fishing graham is on some of these cards as well didn't even realize it my bad my bad yeah graham is like that telegram uh coin i don't know what the affiliation is but i'm not into iron fish or graham personally all right let's move on to new coins see what we got any new coins nope meta chain is the last one three days ago brand new eth hash coin if anybody's interested in mining that no affiliation be careful downloading anything from their websites mining pool stats dot stream is legit when you click into the websites like if you go to hold on real quick or do that events calendar if you go into these new coins and you go down here and you go to their websites you're on your own you leave that site you're on your own once you're in here and you're clicking on shit. so just be careful okay don't link your metamask if you're gonna make a new one that way you're not like screwing yourself all right events calendar let's see e, uh xcc 29 hours is going to be going through a block reward reduction again having 6.25 to 3.125 same as bitcoin coming up shortly we have the isotope iso which is 32 to 16 going through having bsv bitcoin satoshi visions going through having as well same as bitcoin 6.25 to 3.125 radiant going from 50,000 to 25,000 block reward in the next nine days prepare for that and bitcoin itself in 10 days oh octospace going through one of 15 days hell yeah look at that i got some of that i got some octospace so deep in project storage project um yeah bitcoin though 10 days away guys 10 days away little little under 10 days supposedly we'll have to see what happens but if it is in the morning i'll go live early and we will uh we'll figure it out but all right guys let's move on to the news real quick uh what's up with neoxy you're still bullish on it you know what let's uh before i get into the news let's see let's see what neox is looking like i think neox is going to do well long term or in the in the bull run when things pump as of right now um yeah i still have my inodes going it's still holding all my neox i have to make the node i just haven't had time to sit down the studio rebuilding my studio has been taking up all my free time so that's why i'm like stupid tired i'm always like working until like i fall asleep in there <laughs> but yeah no i'm still bullish long term on neox i think they're doing good things so we'll see gaming is going to be a big aspect of of crypto this time around that's just my opinion all right all eyes on bitcoins having event moving on to bloomberg technology let's see what they got to say over here if you guys have any questions just at me in the chat let's do it you build applications for bitcoin it's all about a broadening out of the ecosystem but rena when we go to the halving how much of a fundamental lift will this be do you think first one thank you so much for bringing me here on today I'd say Bitcoin having is going to have a huge impact on Bitcoin markets today. We are in a very unique cycle because we are 10 days away from having. We're at an all time high and a spot ETF just came in America. So at this point, what I'm seeing is that the supply will be shrunk. We will have less Bitcoin entering in after April 20th. But the demand is at an all time high from institutions and retails coming into Bitcoin. What this means is that more people are going to be looking to Bitcoin to turn it from a passive asset to a productive asset. And that's what our company, Trust Machines, is all about, building Let's... real products to do more with their Bitcoin. Go to the passive bit, though. With your experience as the head of the exchange over at Binance US, is it true that we've seen more institutional players come in? Or of late, have we just been powered by more retail accessing spot ETFs in the US, for example? I think it's a little bit of both that we're seeing on the institutional side, more and more are coming in because they now have new access to Bitcoin. But on the retail side, we are seeing new developments with Bitcoin through ordinals, Bitcoin NFTs, and it is creating a brand new supply of artists and creators building with Bitcoin to create a new form of art. This is a very different retail phenomena that we're seeing. Hmm. Okay, different from the NFTs that we all love to talk about a few years ago, Rena. And I'm interested when you're thinking about a Bitcoin network that many have thought of was usually, look, either something that you were gaming in some way, it was more of an asset that you, you bet upon, or indeed stored value, if that was the way that you saw it. Largely, you know, this was something that wasn't being built on from a smart contract perspective that we saw over with ETH. But you're trying to change the narrative around that a little bit, as you say, make it more productive. Where is the production coming from web3 apps that are being built what are the most lucrative for you 
So I think if you were to think about Bitcoin as a market opportunity, we have $1.3 trillion in BTC as an asset class. So we have surpassed the store of value, but we are trying to move into now the medium exchange. If you were to build applications on top of Bitcoin, like layers, like what Lightning is building, or DeFi, or stable coins, or anything under the sun, you could have a, a larger economy as a flywheel on Bitcoin. So think about this. All of the value is what we see on the surface, but the untapped potential of a $100, $200 billion market is below the surface, and we are just scratching the surface through new layered technology on Bitcoin. Like what? Like what technology? What use cases? Who's being called out? Like A what? lot of different use cases. The first is the idea of Bitcoin L2s. Bitcoin is having a moment, and a lot of people are thinking about how to scale Bitcoin by creating new layers like what Ethereum has with polygon or other l2s with bitcoin this means that i can have smart contracts with bitcoin meaning that btc latent capital that asset can be deployed directly into DeFi, um rwas thinking about tokenized treasury bills kind of the world is the limit on the idea of new new products being built on bitcoin but using the most secure and stable blockchain in all of the world so real world assets are key focus. I'm interested in your business in particular, Trust Machines. What sort of revenue growth are you seeing? How, how are you managing to bring in money at the same time as the costs that are involved? There is always costs in doing any sort of business. There's no secret in that. Our product lines are very diversified. One of our products is a leading Bitcoin wallet called Leather, meaning not your keys, not your crypto. We help Americans and people all over the globe get access to Bitcoin and secure it safely here at home. The other product that we're building is a little bit revolutionary and very new. We are bringing the Web2 functionality of a TLD, so a, a domain, if you say, as a passport into Web3 and Bitcoin, meaning I take my digital identity everywhere we go. Look at that. Shout out to Bloomberg Technology, bringing on the teeny, teeny boppers. All right, let's move on. Yahoo Finance, Bitcoin. Analysis explains why he nearly doubled price target from micro strategy. Let's see what they got to say over here on Yahoo Finance. Hit that like button, guys. Hate asking, but YouTube makes me. Benchmark is raising its price target on MicroStrategy today from $990 to $1,875. The analyst noting the Bitcoin rally as the halving draws near. For more, we've got the author of that note. That is Mark Palmer, Benchmark Managing Director and Senior Research Analyst of FinTech and Digital Assets. Good to see you, Mark, as always. And as you know, there is a big debate going on when it comes to MicroStrategy and the premium at which it trades to Bitcoin itself. If you do various calculations, you can arrive at that premium. It's a big premium. Um, and so talk to me about why you think that premium is justified. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, thanks very much for having me today. Uh, this is the big question that you see raised out there right now. Why is it that MicroStrategy is trading at such a big premium when somebody could just go uh, and buy Bitcoin themselves or buy a spot Bitcoin ETF. And to put this into perspective, the premium uh, to MicroStrategy's NAV um, you know, is, has been fluctuating, but it's been uh, more than one and a half times NAV, uh, which, which has brought us back to this question. I think that those who are raising this concern uh, are looking at things uh, from a static standpoint. Uh, that is to say, they're looking at where MicroStrategy's Bitcoin holdings are currently, uh, whereas as an equity analyst, I'm looking into the future and, and trying to gauge uh, a few things. One, uh, how much uh, Bitcoin will the company have a couple of years out? Uh, what will the price of Bitcoin be a couple of years out? And, and then how is the company going to be able to uh, get to uh, that higher level of Bitcoin holdings? Well, that's one of the uh, key differences between MicroStrategy and, and a spot Bitcoin ETF. Its ability to go out into the capital markets uh, to raise the proceeds to buy additional Bitcoin. And uh, the company has really timed the market uh, incredibly well. Uh, it's uh, two convertible debt offerings in March. Both had coupons less than 1%. You know, so they're borrowing at under 1%, turning around 
and, and buying uh, an asset that has been uh, performing extremely well. And, and this is a big part of the reason. If you, if you stack up MicroStrategy shares uh, next to the Bitcoin itself, uh, it has significantly outperformed uh, Bitcoin uh, since the company initiated its uh, uh, Bitcoin acquisition strategy back in August of 2020. For that matter, it's outperformed the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, gold, silver, all the big tech stocks. So uh, the, the strategy has been proved out. And especially in a bull market, we think that a premium is, is justified. So then Mark, you know, you guys are talking about 150,000 per coin on Bitcoin, about double where we stand today. Love to have you uh, talk through a little bit of the thinking around what is the catalyst to get us, um, you know, a double in the price of Bitcoin uh, over the, you know, through the end of next year. Yes, you know, we're assuming that the price of Bitcoin will reach $150,000 by the end of 2025 due to two main factors. Uh, one is the supply shock that is caused by the Bitcoin halving. Uh, the fact that the new supply of Bitcoin is going to be uh, literally cut in half um, on or about April 20th uh, means that um, the, the supply is uh, simply going to fall off a cliff. Uh, at the same which is true it's going to be crazy do you guys own more than 0 0.002 bitcoin i'm going to put a poll in the chat i want to know just because you should if you don't and if you haven't seen my most recent video go check it out same time that we are seeing a demand shock uh which is the result of the sec's approval of spot bitcoin etfs back in january you know we've already seen more than 34 billion dollars flow into uh the 10 spot Bitcoin ETFs, uh, not counting the grayscale uh, GBTC structure. Um, and that's really been a retail phenomenon. We haven't seen uh, the institutional investors get significantly involved yet. Uh, they're, they're sharpening their pencils, doing their homework. And when they get involved, we could really see the demand side of things uh, pick up materially, uh, which, which is why we feel that uh, the price of Bitcoin is going to um, outperform it's a uh, 10 year Kager uh, over the next uh, two years. It's 10 year Kager has been over 56%. So shout out to them for that. If you guys don't own at least 0 0.0025 Bitcoin, which equates to like under 300 bucks or something, you, you should because there's 8 billion people in the world. Bitcoin is so scarce that literally not everybody on the planet can own that much from people that have more than one or more than that Bitcoin in the bank that takes off, you know, a bunch of people on the table being able to own at least that much. So if you don't have it, you should probably consider it. It's like 300 bucks. Just put it in there and save it for 30 years. You'll thank me later. All right, Marathon Digital. Let's see what they got to say over here on Bloomberg Television. Guys, that like button, appreciate you for hanging out. Let's do it. It's worthwhile to start with the prices here of Bitcoin and how you think it might be impact into the having a lot of questions out there of whether a lot of those rises have already been baked in. In correction, 0 0.0025 Bitcoin is, I guess, $163. Thank you, the one who was. Appreciate you. I think the ETF's approval, um, which has been a huge success, has attracted capital into the market and essentially brought forward what could have been the price appreciation we typically would have seen three to six months post having. So I think we're seeing part of that now uh, already. Uh, these ETFs, 11 were approved. Four of the 11 ETFs are the most successful ETF launches on record uh, ever. And the total amount of capital in the ETFs uh, already has surpassed 50% of the amount of uh, assets under management in gold ETFs. So uh, what has happened in three or four months compared to 20 years with gold is pretty astounding. And so we think that has pulled forward some of the demand. Uh, the halving event will reduce the supply of Bitcoin by about 450 a day, the new emissions of Bitcoin, uh, which will have some small impact on price most probably. But as miners, we're very excited to go into a halving where for once price has not declined prior to the halving, but rather price has gone up. So everybody's obviously maximizing and optimizing to that. Right, Fred. I so I'm worried about the uh, buy the rumor, sell the news event, right? But at the same time, the demand from these ETFs brought in so many people wanting to buy Bitcoin. How much do you guys think it's actually going to pull back if it is a buy the rumor, sell the news event? I don't think it's going to be a giant pullback like a lot of people are expecting. I want to talk about exactly what you're doing to optimize ahead of that having uh, over at Marathon, you guys uh, on average mine about 28.7 Bitcoin 
each day. Um, what are you doing to decrease the cost since it's going to cost you more to mine these Bitcoin? What are you doing to save money and uh, ease your margins? Great question. So we built the business and scaled very quickly using an asset light model where we essentially relied on third parties to build the infrastructure, the hosting, the data centers, if you would, then we would come in, plug in our miners. So 100% of our CapEx was invested in miners that allowed us to scale to become the largest miner, publicly traded miner, arguably in the world. Then in December, we went and started looking at those hosting relationships and we started moving to consolidate them. And we now have gone from owning less than 3% of our facilities to owning over 53% of our facilities in just a, sh a few short months. The benefit there is it allows us to essentially take out the middleman, take out the margin that we were paying a third party to build infrastructure and manage it. And we were able to do that at a cost less than the replacement cost for those assets. So. Uh, a net net great gain for our shareholders in that regard. We'll continue to do that as we move forward, as well as continue to expand through owned and operated facilities, both in the US and abroad. Average daily Bitcoin produced, you have at 28.7 as of the end of February. When you think about the halving, how is it gonna change your economics and what you see in terms of Bitcoin rewards, you think? Bitcoin real quick is actually down to 67,000 right now. Or it's a 68 over here, according to CoinGecko, but I just bought some on Coinbase, actually. So the essentially, if you look at the number 28 um, on average per day, that would turn to be 14 roughly uh, per day. We'll have to see the impact, if any, on the global hash rate. Remembering that Bitcoin mining is a zero-sum game. Uh, today, there are 900 Bitcoin made a day or emitted a day. Uh, Post-having, it'll be 450. And all the people mining are vying for that. So... All our compute is competing for that. So the key is to be one of the most energy efficient miners. Marathon's fleet is amongst the most energy efficient uh, in the industry. Those miners that have less efficient machines uh, may have to shut off, but the high price of Bitcoin right now essentially has made it profitable for even marginal miners mm -hmm. to mine post having. Uh, what we'll have to see is really what happens to the dynamic. If the price of Bitcoin were to drop ten, twenty thousand uh, dollars per Bitcoin, that could potentially push some of the more marginal miners over the edge and they would have to stop mining and they could become acquisition targets potentially. You also have a fairly large number of rigs, the computers, if you would, that miners use that are not very energy efficient that will be marginalized by this having. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens, but we're very focused on both organic and inorganic growth. And we believe that the industry globally is going to continue to grow and add hash rate uh, to continue to mine and secure the Bitcoin blockchain. Fred, on so I know a lot of you guys are uh, actually, you know, mining at home. So if you guys know, like Bitcoin miners, a SHA-256 miners, I mentioned this in my last video as well. Right now, Digibyte is actually most profitable over here. Just looking at this, actually, you know, let's go to uh, whatever, S19 XP real quick. So you guys can see. You guys can mine these coins right here, right? Digibyte, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, HTR, whatever that is. But, well, actually, what the hell? These are zero. Weird. Anyways, BCH, right? That's probably a good alternative if you're at home and you need to figure out something to mine if Digibyte doesn't hold up for some reason after the halving. But, I mean, yeah, it sucks to the Bitcoin network. Machines coming off it. But at the same time, it'll come back and the price appreciates. But if you're an at-home miner, you guys still have options to mine other coins and swap it into bitcoin so don't forget about that average how much does it cost you to to mine a bitcoin and uh like what's the cost of extraction uh and then i'm wondering also about potentially moving more outside of the u.s uh perhaps to find uh, cheaper energy sure so uh, our average cost to mine bitcoin across all the facilities is in the low twenty thousand dollar range today and and by that, we include the energy cost as well as the operating overhead, uh, meaning the people on the ground that run the facilities, any cost to run the facilities, et cetera. Uh, so it's the marginal cost of mining Bitcoin, if you would. Um, that will now go to about $46,000 on average. Uh, obviously, the people cost doesn't increase. It's just the amount of effort, the amount of energy that the miners have to um, do that will double. Um, so domestically, we're still going to be in a great position. We operate today on three continents, North America, um, the Gulf region in Africa, as well as Latin America and Paraguay. 
We're going to continue to grow our business internationally. One of our goals is to have 50% of our revenues from outside of the U.S. by 2028, which is the next halving in line after the one we're going to have here in a couple of weeks. The other thing we're doing, we're very focused on a vertically integrated technology stack, so everything from our pool software, which is the orchestration layer that kind of controls what our miners do, all the way down to the firmware in the miners, and also investments in ASIC technology through a company called Oridine, which is the only U.S. ASIC manufacturer in the space, um, located in Silicon Valley, and then also immersion or cooling technology. We just released some uh, very interesting immersion technology at the Empower Conference in Houston a few weeks ago, and so we think that even the AI industry will have interest in that. So diversifying revenue streams, optimizing existing operations, Fred, and continue to expand. Fred, quickly here, how do you feel about the future when it comes to your industry? You kind of alluded to this idea that players could be washed out when we think about the dynamics and the pressure that it puts on uh, the Bitcoin having rewards being less uh, this cycle and, of course, in future cycles. How are you preparing for that potential washout? You mentioned acquisitions. What do you do today to prepare for that opportunity? And how big do you think that opportunity so will be? Yeah, it, great question. So we are believers that Bitcoin miners have to try to strive to get to zero cost energy. And what do I mean by that? It means that basically the only way we'll survive long term is that our cost of energy is offset by something else. So we have started an initiative that we call energy harvesting. This is where we are going to landfills and using stranded methane gas from landfills. It could be oil fields. It could be biomass from beer brewing, ethanol manufacturing, methanol manufacturing, where you take that biomass, convert it into energy, and then feed back into whatever that industrial process was, heat. Industry pays uh, about 50% of the energy cost for industry is spent on heating things. And so Bitcoin miners are great at generating heat hmm. when they mine Bitcoin. About 95% of the energy that goes into a chip that mines Bitcoin comes out as heat. So we believe that Bitcoin miners will be able to essentially take stranded energy in the form of methane, biomass, what have you, generate electricity, generate heat, sell the heat back into an industrial process. All of that subsidizes the cost to mine Bitcoin because Bitcoin is simply how we generate the heat that we sell back. And I think mm -hmm. longer term, Bitcoin mining will move from being these large data center sites with hundreds of megawatts to being hundreds of thousands of much smaller sites that are doing everything from heating buildings in Finland to mining, uh, to heating greenhouses, hmm. heating uh, shrimp farms. We've seen that. We've seen the mining uh, in greenhouses to keep it warm. Uh, industrial processes, ethanol plants, processing corn waste, cow manure, dairies, etc. That's the future for Bitcoin mining long term. That's crazy. You know what we need? We need Elon Musk to put Bitcoin machines or mining machines inside the Teslas. So when you burn the electricity, you can earn some coin as you drive. It'd be amazing. All right. CNBC Crypto World. Let's see what they got to say over here. Bitcoin retreats below 70,000 in Binance's new CEO discusses company culture. Let's get into it. Hit that like button, guys. Appreciate you for hanging out. Let's do it. Today, Bitcoin retreats back below $70,000. Binance's new CEO says the crypto company has now moved into, quote, greater maturity after paying that multi-billion dollar fine. And Danelle Dixon, CEO of Stellar, discusses the latest on the rollout of smart contracts to its blockchain. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Talia Kaplan. Crypto prices in the red this morning, with Bitcoin falling back below the $70,000 level. As of noon Eastern, the cryptocurrency fell 3.5% to $69,229. Ether dipped nearly 3% to the $3,500 level, and Polygon's Matic token dropped more than 3% to $0.91. Cents. Now, the drop in prices come one day after a Deutsche Bank survey revealed that consumers are becoming a little less skeptical about Bitcoin. Although, just under a third of those questioned still expect the cryptocurrency's price will fall sharply by the end of this year. I wonder. Let's see real quick. I saw a YouTube video that someone modified their Tesla to power a Bitcoin ant miner. Get out of here, Carl Coat. Send me the link if you find it. Put it in Discord. I'd love to watch it. That's crazy. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. CNBC's Arjun Karpal is at Paris Blockchain Week where he caught up with Binance's new CEO. Richard Tang took over after Shengpeng Zhao pleaded guilty to violating the Bank Secrecy Act back in November. 
The company itself had to pay a $4.3 billion fine to the U.S. government. Bruh. Tang says Binance has now matured past its cultural issues. And it's important to look forward, to move on, to build on a very important franchise. Right? So we have commenced uh, that building process in terms of investing heavily in our compliance program for the past two and a half, three years. Right? So it didn't take place overnight. So in 2022, we have invested about 258 million US dollars in terms of our compliance program. Last year, that figure went up to 213 million, right? So you can see the amount of investments. We continue to recruit the best talent out there possible to help us push the agenda forward. While attending Paris Blockchain Week, Arjun also spoke with some of the issuers behind the spot Bitcoin ETFs that hit US markets back in January. They expressed doubts that spot Ether ETFs would win approval from the SEC. Venek is one of the first in line for a final decision in May, and its CEO told CNBC he thinks the application would probably be rejected by the SEC. Now you can read that full story over at CNBC.com. Next, Deputy Secretary of the Treasury, Wally Adeyemo, warned of terrorist groups and other qu What was that name she just said? <laughs> Sorry, I gotta hear CNBC. that again. CNBC.com. Next, Deputy Secretary of the Treasury, Wally Adeyemo, <laughs> warned of terrorist groups and other, quote, malign actors turning to crypto to try and circumvent sanctions. In testimony before the Senate Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs Committee today, Adiemo said that the department fears these groups will increase their use of digital assets without congressional action. He warned that groups like Al-Qaeda, Hamas, and state actors like Russia as well as North Korea were finding new ways to hide their identities and move resources using crypto. Adiemo said the department had shown some success in rooting out illicit finance in the digital ecosystem, but that the U.S. needed to expand enforcement to prevent these activities. He urged Congress to pass legislation which he recommended should include secondary sanctions targeted at foreign digital asset providers that facilitate illicit finance. <laughs> so, <laughs> she made that up, said Alien Black. It sounded like a made-up name. <laughs> All right, for our main story, last month, Layer 1 Blockchain Stellar launched its Soroban update aimed at bringing smart contracts to the network. Crypto World's Jordan Smith spoke with Danelle Dixon, CEO and Executive Director of Stellar, about how that upgrade is going. Danelle, thank you so much for being here. We're just a few weeks into the launch of Sorb and Stellar's smart contracts platform. I explain this update to Stellar's network for people who are unfamiliar and, and also how it's going so far. Yeah, the, hands down, this is the biggest thing that's happened on Stellar since its inception. Uh, you know, Stellar has uh, an awesome payments network and um, a really robust uh, practice with respect to being able to send and receive value very uh, inexpensively, securely. And um, they, there are over 15 billion operations on the network, but there wasn't a smart contract platform. So there wasn't this space where developers could come and just sort of build what they wanted to build and how they wanted to build it. And so we really wanted to create that greenfield space for builders to be able to do that. And so we did that. And it's been about two weeks that soraban has been live and it's been pretty awesome to see, not just even beforehand, we had testnet where folks were already building. We had 190 projects building there that are moving over to mainnet. Um, but just to see even at the inception of um, since March, since our, since we brought it, uh, since we brought it live, we've seen like really, really important financial building blocks like automated market makers. We've seen lending and borrowing protocols already come. We've seen data access tools like oracles. And then the reverse of that, so indexers that are looking at data on the, on the on the network, and then of course, like a really really important part for us is the tooling support and infrastructure, like security audit firms and block explorers. Those are really important to be able to show the robustness of uh, Sorbonne. So it's been really fun to see all these different players, these new players, come to Stellar, and it's a uh, you know it, we weren't the first, but I certainly think it's the best. Can you talk a little bit about the speed of adoption? You know, there's the Sorbon Adoption Fund, which is investing $100 million into projects using the smart contracts platform. Talk about the speed of development on the network, especially as we just had this period of crypto winter where it was all about, you know, heads down and, and build. What does that look like on Stellar? Yeah, well, so, I mean, we, during that period, so Stellar has always been really focused on the real world use cases and really focused on, in, and we've seen like a huge adoption of real world assets on the network. So you see Franklin Templeton and Wisdom Tree and other players out there that are bringing their assets to the network for good reason, because it's a very secure network for them to be able to do that on. And they they like the tech the tech stack that's there, and they've been able to leverage a lot of the, the compliance tools for it from a real world asset standpoint. So we've seen 
really fascinating adoption just on uh, what we used to call classic Stellar, but really, which is just the payments platform for Stellar. And now with Sorbonne, we see the opportunity to kind of have everyday financial services. And so we were really excited about all the different participants that came. It's Sorbonne is built with Rust and Wasm. So we're, we're really leveraging communities that already exist. It's not new languages that you needed to learn to be able to build on Sorbonne. And so we have these really great tools that are already on the network that have just spent a bunch of time. You know, it took us about a year and a half to two years to be able to get Sorbonne live. But during that time, we had developers pull all the way through with us. And so to have them now move to mainnet has been pretty great. So the adoption of the Stellar network has been pretty remarkable. I've been here for five years now, and it's just been we went from, uh, you know, when I first started, we hadn't yet even reached a billion operations on the network, and now we're doing a billion operations a month. Um, and so it's a pretty remarkable dif dif difference just over that time period. And now with Sorbonne, it's just going to be supercharged. What, what does competition look like for Stellar? Are you focused on the Solanas and Polygons and Ethereums, or are you really focused more on, on TradFi as competition and bringing a new wave of, of finance or of tokenization? That's such a great question. When you think about TradFi, I think about TradFi as an opportunity for them to be able to use this really amazing technology. So I think about us enhancing and them enhancing. The, the, the enhancement goes both ways in terms of using blockchain to enhance what they've built, but also that we get to be able to bring these really wonderful assets to participants that may not have before had access to it. And so that's the promise and the value of blockchain. Um, so I don't think of like TradFi as necessarily competition. I think them of them as like a user of this tech stack to be able to make it and to really bring it to market in a fascinating way. Uh, in terms of the, the chains that are out there, certainly I look at Solana as competition for Stellar, but I, I actually really rejoice in the notion of competition. You know, Stellar is a network where you can always see that there is there are there are problems that are being solved by developers all over the world that are real problems that are challenges that are put forth by local users that they want to be able to solve and developers can use this global public network to be able to do that so if you want to actually see where humans are engaging with blockchain in a way that was the the original inception of blockchain which was it was going to make it so that the world was sort of globalless and that users who didn't actually have bank accounts or credit cards and didn't have access to that, to those everyday financial services, could gain that access through blockchain. Then you got to look on Stellar because that is where everyday financial services are happening. There are lots of other mm -hmm. benefits on other chains, um, but the, the truth of the matter is the on and off ramps, all the things that are important and necessary to be able to bring this technology to humans, there, it's available on Stellar. And that's not the case for other chains. So I think that everybody's got sort of their own thing that they're focused on. We have always been heads down, focused on delivering this kind of value, and we're going to continue to do that. You, you talked about how a lot of tra traditional financial partners, uh, or you want a lot of traditional financial partners, uh, and one of the things that they're really beholden to are, are regulations. And it seems like they, mm -hmm. they are still unsure of where the regulation stands for a lot of the crypto industry. Um, how are you thinking about regulation for your platform and for, for building this technology with TradFi? Yeah, so that's a great question. I think compliance is such an important piece of it. And so regulators are going to want to see compliance tools. Those are built into Stellar. So from the that's been something that those the, the developers in the ecosystem around Stellar have focused on from the early days is really putting those compliant the compliance tools in play so that, that that it could be leveraged by regulated financial uh, institutions. I think the policy around this, particularly in the U.S., is complicated. I mean, I've been advocating for and really pushing for stablecoin legislation in the U.S. for probably two and a half years now. And I thought it was low-hanging fruit, and we haven't actually seen it come to fruition yet, although I'm still hopeful that it will this year before the summer. Uh, so I think that it's really just understanding the regulatory environment, making sure that blockchain is not actually looked at as different or unique because it is just the tech stack. It is the tech stack that traditional financial institutions can leverage to be able to bring their products and services to end users and businesses. And so we can't, we, we have done ourselves a bit of a disservice by focusing so much on the technology and not on the outcome um, as an industry. And really what we're trying to do now is what is the outcome that you're trying to regulate? What is the focus that you're trying to get to and protect against? Don't think about the tech stack because that's, that's somewhat irrelevant to the outcome, uh, so long as the tech stack is actually driving that value. So we're really trying to think and, and work with regulators from that standpoint. 
instead of from the like let's break down every piece of blockchain technology because you know we didn't do that back in the days of the early days of the web that's how we were able to get and be able to manipulate and leverage all the different technologies that the web offered and we need to be able to let that flourish while we're still focusing on the outcomes that we want to protect against from a regulatory standpoint hmm. final question for me what's next for stellar this year what are you most excited about for your business Oh, well, I'm, I'm just really, really excited about Sorbonne and really seeing that, um, that ecosystem grow and grow and flourish. I think that it is, uh, you know, the, the adoption fund is something that we think that we're going to spend a bunch of time and energy on and really bringing different uh, protocols and, um, and companies to Sorbonne. Um, but mostly, I just think that this is going to drive so much opportunity for everyday financial services and to be able to bring those to users and consumers all over the world that don't actually have the same access that folks do in, in, uh, in the more in the Western countries. So I'm just really excited about that. And I think that this is going to be um, quite a year for Stellar and, um, and for the ecosystem at large. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today. But we'll All right, shout out to CNBC Crypto World. No, they're talking about XLM, right? XLM, is this the Stella they're talking about right here? Um, 2017, 2021. You think that's going to break new all-time highs? It looks like a downtrend to me, but the higher lows is kind of weird. Hmm, who knows? Who knows? All right, so I think we're going to skip this one. I want you guys to go listen to this, though. I haven't listened to it yet. Inflation is sticky, and Bitcoin will skyrocket. I noticed this dude's camera is awful this guy and he's like talking for like 20 minutes so i think we're gonna skip this one but go check out anthony pompliano's video if you guys haven't already let's jump into altcoin daily we have my retire in five years crypto strategy 1k to 100k nine new low cap altcoins let's see what he's shilling in today's video guys the like button appreciate you for hanging out let's get into it it's worthwhile to start with the prices here of Bitcoin and how you think it might be impact into the having a lot of questions out there of whether a lot of those rises have already been baked in. Bitcoin insider Fred Thiel. This is the CEO of Marathon Digital, one of the largest Bitcoin mining companies in the U.S., comes clean as to what he expects with Bitcoin after the halving. I think the ETF's approval, um, which has been a huge success has attracted capital into the market and essentially brought forward what could have been the price appreciation we typically would have seen three to six months post having. So I think we're seeing part of that now uh, already. Uh, these ETFs, 11 were approved. Four of the 11 ETFs are the most successful ETF launches on record uh, ever. And the total amount of capital in the ETFs uh, already has surpassed 50% of the amount of uh, assets under management in gold ETF. So uh, what has happened in three or four months compared to 20 years with gold is pretty astounding. And so we think that has pulled forward some of the demand. Uh, the halving event will reduce the supply of Bitcoin by about 450 a day, the new emissions of Bitcoin, uh, which will have some small impact on price most probably. But as miners, we're very excited to go into a halving where, for once, price has not declined prior to the halving, but rather price has gone up. So everybody's obviously maximizing and optimizing to that. Supply and demand dynamics will be in full effect. Prepare for a continuation of this trend. I think, personally, we're going to see a rotation into Ethereum after the halving. Think about it. Mm. Bitcoin ETF and halving narrative will be in Bitcoin's past. The market is forward-looking. Ethereum ETF still on the horizon. Ethereum narratives still have yet to really break through. I mean, that is a possibility with the ETF thing, right? Coming for, uh, for Ethereum. So he's not like entirely wrong. Not that Bitcoin won't continue to go up. I think it will. I just think we're going to start seeing lower cap speculation like we normally do That's after cool. Bitcoin breaks all time highs. We're already starting to see the media prioritizing Ethereum. Listen. A lot going on in the cryptocurrency space. We have the halving with Bitcoin coming up in a few weeks. And also Ether, the idea of not only ETFs, but just the fact that a lot of people see it as a more viable and useful cryptocurrency because you can build apps on it. What's your take on some of these moves that we're seeing? 
I think that when crypto's back, it tends to come back across coins. You don't usually just see only Bitcoin, and that's certainly what we're seeing. We've even seen some of those, you know, coins that are a little bit, uh, there's not much utility for them, you know, have a huge ramp up over the last kind of couple months. And so I'm not surprised to see this excitement around ETH. Uh, I think that the crypto diehards think that ETH is sort of a more perfect Bitcoin. It's just that the price never quite catches up. Um, but I do think that we're going to continue to see some positive moves in it. All right, ETH makes it sound so cute. Seriously, all of these Bitcoin ETF conversations are slowly adding in Ethereum. Listen to this interview with the CEO of Van Eck. The reporter can't wait to interject and ask him about Ethereum. Listen. The narrative was really this is going to bring in the big institutions who were perhaps on the sidelines for a while in this market. Has, has that happened yet? You know, I, I think it's a different narrative, actually. To me, it's that it's legal to own Bitcoin in the U.S. You don't understand, like when we launched our first gold fund in 1968, it was illegal for Americans to own gold bullion. We had to invest in gold mining shares. So I think it's that legal approval that's the first step. It's just very early for many institutions. There's no private bank in the U.S. that has approved their advisors to call customers to invest in Bitcoin. So zero. So we have a long, a long ways to go before it's fully adopted. Uh, and all eyes now really on Ethereum uh, and whether there's an ETF in the U.S. to market. I know you've got an Ethereum exchange traded product here in Europe, yeah. uh, but are you planning to launch anything in, in the U.S. for an Ethereum ETF? We're first to file as well. Wait, they have one in Europe already? Ethereum in the U.S. and we and ARK, Kathy Wood, um, are kind of the first in line for May. He goes on to say that Van Eck is not expecting an Ethereum ETF approval in May, but in fact later down Definitely the line. Not. But that all doesn't change the bigger picture that the mainstream media is... They will just keep delaying it until, you know, as long as they can, basically. Just now waking up to the fact they're just starting to understand what we know Ethereum has real investable economics and its upside is quite big. But perhaps how, how is like Gensler not going to think that Ethereum's a security? That's kind of like my concern um, with the staking feature, right? Like how is something not a security when you can stake it? I don't I don't know. I could be totally wrong. You guys let me know what you think about it in the chat. I have no idea. I don't know what the argument's going to be, but I'm sure it's not going to be great. It's the best kept secret about all this is it has real investable economics. The network right now is generating over $7 billion in fees, all paid in ETH, and all these fees fund a programmatic buyback and dividend. So when the network expands and entrepreneurs building on top of Ethereum have their own success, it drives value directly to token holders. At its current scale of activity, the supply of ETH tokens is actually declining. Now, two implications I want to point out about this. The first is ETH can be analyzed using traditional financial tools. You can build an Ethereum DCF. And I think you'll be surprised by how this pencils out when you have this recursive relationship between demand growing and supply shrinking. The second thing is you can start to see why more and more people see Ethereum as a complement to Bitcoin as a non-sovereign store of value for a digital world. Bit Isn't that crazy how Bitcoin is literally right there with silver? Bitcoin offers greater certainty of supply, but Ethereum uh, now pays a dividend and is deflationary. And the upside here is quite big. Smash the All right, so X Game Rider said, your bank pays interest, not a security. Same with your car loan. All right. Like button, let's get into it. Mm. Nine low cap altcoins I'm buying. Keep in mind, and it's good to assume I'm an- All right, so before he gets into this, I don't know if any of these are paid chills. I have no idea. I haven't seen this video at all, so <laughs> take it as you will. Early investor. For many of these, even an advisor for some of these projects. Full disclosure. There we are we go. Always going well, you said advisor for some of the projects. Going to be open with you Probably about our disclosures them. here at Altcoin Daily. Yeah, yeah. Guns. Big partnership slash integration for guns. Huge news for all guns users and builders. Guns is integrating with OpenSea, making it the ninth blockchain to be supported by this leading NFT marketplace. If you don't know about guns, players and OpenSea users alike will be able to trade in-game items natively on the guns chain through OpenSea using the gun token, which will work for any game built on the guns blockchain starting with Skip off the this grid. Stuff, so yeah. this is a massive injection. I just want to see what the coins are, to be honest. All right, well, I guess we can. Uh, we can skip it if you want. Let's see. Let's just skip through then. Let's see what the coins are talking about. What is this? Uh, what is this? K Hood launching in April. Don't know what that is. Hmm. Fine. We'll skip it. We'll skip it, you guys. 
let's see let's see what else we got oh this karate is anybody into that karate combat coin or token anybody let me know i don't know uh again i've never i haven't seen this video so i don't know what any of these are Cody, Cody foundation don't know what that is Rex too yeah these are all just shit coins paid to pump coins all right whatever let's recap things guys Get into the recap segment of things shout out to all coin daily for the first half of the video everything is looking red Bruh. red as hell crazy 67 1875 for bitcoin we have ethereum dropped five percent 34 34 look at that we have solana at 165 bucks again litecoins at 95 dollars caspa at 13 cents we have dogecoin at 18 cents ada at 56 cents i think that's a good idea to uh get in on that it's my opinion dogecoin i already said that a shiba yeah everything pretty much all the meme coins are just kind of cranking down let's see what the biggest loser of the week is or earner of the week is dkb is up 107 percent in the last seven days damn that's pretty good that's pretty good get your dry power ready fellas what does that mean dry power dry power why did i know that term what does that mean what does dry power mean hold on What does that mean? I don't even know what that means. Dry power is a financial term that refers to cash reserves that are kept on hand by individuals, companies, or venture capital firms. Is that is that what you meant? Is that how you're using it? Oh, dry powder. Dry powder. Ah, okay. Maybe. <laughs> All right. So, oh, they corrected it actually dry powder yeah so that was the term all right i've never heard that before i've never once heard that again flashbang looking at 78 on the fear and greed index let's see looking like over here what are the coins you guys are looking into like what's your what's your altcoin what's your best bet that you think is going to do the best for your portfolio throw it in the chat i want to know just give me one one coin dry powder yeah i've never heard that yeah <laughs> yeah sniff sniffs that's the one who was yeah that's the only that's the only dry powder i guess i've heard of because i never heard of that term ever <laughs> or baby powder those are the two that's it doge doge jj doc okay alethium you know what? let's check out alethium how's alethium doing today alethium oh god why why every time i hit enter after typing in the ticker never goes three dollars 37 cents i think alethium is gonna do well just because of the miners but at the same time you're better off buying the coin than buying the machines my opinion it's only 12 percent down and it was about a month ago it had its all-time high three dollars 86 cents so again three dollars 37 cents as of right now let's see base alien black base which uh are you talking about base swap like coinbase that coinbase uh thing interesting flux let's see how flux is doing actually i haven't looked at flux in forever oh ooh, geez 8.3 percent down a dollar 100 uh, sorry a dollar and five cents 105 dollars imagine dollar and five cents man i wonder i wonder if we're gonna have a run up on flux it looks like it's building we'll see the flux edge thing is actually uh hopefully gonna push this somewhere i don't know kind of pissed i sold my flux though kind of pissed i sold it but at the same time it's uh i don't know it's tough it's tough tough decision you can't hold everything you know let's see dynex actually real quick anybody liking dynex or not dynex has actually not been doing great been taking a real shit lately 67 cents 67 cents i wonder what's going on with this to be honest what do you guys think uh let's see what else what else you guys got solana says uh crypto scotty yeah solana is gonna have a good a good chance to have a run up right let's see 2021 you guys see it popped right went up there 2024 it's gearing up to have another explosion i wonder how high it's gonna go i think solana's gonna do well i wouldn't be shocked if it got 500 to a thousand bucks i would not be shocked 
that's just my opinion but again max supply it is a it is a network coin right it's like a it's kind of like ethereum right they're both uh both unlimited and yeah they both have uh things that run on them right layer ones so uh let's see five hundred dollars for soul says carl coat ckb yeah ckb is doing crazy right now right now i don't know how good it's gonna do long term but it is doing really good right now three and a half cents 12.6 percent up what's all-time high four cents four three about three years ago 18.7 percent huh yeah i mean we could have another run-up we could for sure i can't believe it's that close to this all-time high that's crazy let's see flux and soul will be my bets uh ccxd i'm waiting for flux to drop under a dollar before i buy back in flux has good stuff coming but move slowly and you know what fully electric i'll buy back into when it's uh when it's a little bit lower uh let me see what else you guys are saying in the chat hmm oh radiant somebody said radiant is that yeah rxd it's down 10 percent right now it's going through a halving don't forget it's going through a halving real soon this is the max chart 2022 it came out weird april 15th 2023 shot up it's having higher lows just looking at the coin gecko chart right it's not uh like obviously all the low points are seem to be higher got an upwards trend so i guess we'll have to see i don't know i don't know i don't hold any of radiant i wish tangent would come out with friggin' radiant on their card already so i could hold it what the hell is elmo elmo oh you're telling me to play Elmo? what the hell this is an elmo token <laughs> Oh my god, Elmo ERC is an Ethereum meme coin, I assume. Uh god, these meme coins, man. Meme coins. ADA. ADA I think has a really good chance. I really do. And it's uh like I said, I don't think it's, it's there's no specific reason. I don't even have a big bag of it. I have about a thousand bucks in it, maybe. Uh probably less now because it dropped. But it's down 81.7% in every single bull run. It explodes. Almost stupid not to not to take a shot at it. You know what I mean? It's like it's been a top 10 coin forever and now it's in 11th place. I'm sure it'll get back in top 10. Uh, let's see what else. BSV. Jupiter. Jupiter, actually. I don't know about BSV. I'm not really a fan of that one. Uh, let's see. What am I doing? Jupiter. $1.27. Max look like here. Yeah, so this shit's... I mean, this stuff's still new. It's going to find its way, right? Two months ago, $2. It was its all-time high. Interesting. I don't know. We'll see what happens with that one, I guess. Let me scroll down a bit. I'd get rid of Radiant. Yeah, the one who was? Really? I have a moon bag of Bonk. Just hoping it will pump in the next run. Bonk. Bonk's, uh... I don't know. I... I i mean listen you can get really rich with meme coins but you could also lose everything real fast Re hold on a second <laughs> oh kids yelling down the stairs that's great anyways all right so let's see if i was subbed you'd read it if i was sub tyson what'd you say tyson uh let's see look up or supply on the solana chain or is a coin this one where's the or network yeah that's solana it's on solana right max uh what is this april 9th it just came out Did it just come out yeah but like see this like i don't know if it just came to coin gecko or if it just came out probably just came to coin gecko but april 9th look at the price 429 i wouldn't buy into that that's just devs took the money out they just wanted to dump it on you guys I don't know what it is. I don't know anything about it. $500. It's down 50% in a day. That's a lot. That's gross. <laughs> Just turn the TV on. I'll be up in a sec. No, it was actually, <laughs> it's actually my daughter has to go to the bathroom. So just let me know because she's going to be stuck there until I get up there. <laughs> so yeah, that's how it is. Daddy duty. You guys know. All right, let's see. Let's see if we're going to, uh, Let's see if we're going to raid Miss Randy Hipper. I think she might be going live shortly. I will not be here tomorrow, so you guys know. 
Yes, Randy Hipper will be live in about 20 minutes. But yeah, I won't be here tomorrow, guys. So just, uh, I don't know. I'll try to do a video if I can. If I can't, then I'm sorry. But I'll try to uh, I'll try to get something out if I can. And if not, we'll, uh, we'll stream at a later date tomorrow. Let's see. Daddy Judy. Yeah, like quite literally. <laughs> quite literally. All right, let's see. Mr. Holy Electric with the $5 super chat last Perfect. minute. CCXT, let's push on X for Flux and Radiant to get on Tangem. Absolutely. We should. You know what? Because I actually hold on. Tangem. Mm, let's see. I don't think I'm signed in. I'm definitely not signed in. Why can't I search in Twitter without being signed in? So freaking stupid. So annoying. Uh. <laughs> thank you for the super chat appreciate you let me see all right i'm signed in over here i'm signed in over here on x let's see they have a, a list of hmm let's scroll through this till i find the, the list sorry if i'm uh giving anybody seizure alert Mm, where is the list of the upgrades or the additions to the wallets? Why don't they just like pin that shit? Where is it? Satoshi friends? What the hell? Oh, here it is. Ah, here we go. Look at that. All right. Roadmap radiant in April. Hurry the f up, please. I don't know what's going on with Flux. I don't know what's going on with Dynex, but Dynex was supposed to be into this wallet at the beginning of the year. And they've been dicking us around. I don't know what's going on with that. I love Tangem though. Everything to do with Tangem, they're awesome. Um, obviously it takes some time to get these layer ones onto their network, so or onto their card. So I get it, uh, but this is the, uh, the roadmap. For anybody that's wondering, this is what it is. Radiant, Nexa, Moonbeam, whatever the hell that is, Manta. Um, all these coins coming to it. This one's in April, 11 networks. May and June, six plus networks. We should push for Flux to get on here because I hate having to hold it in like a hot wallet. And to be honest, I'm just not a fan of Zelcor. That's just my opinion. All right, guys, listen, I love you all. I got to get the hell out of here. I got to get back to daddy duty, <laughs> as you guys know. But anyways, I won't be here tomorrow. Again, just a quick reminder, I might go live super early or a bit later i don't know if i can i will i'll post it if not i'll see you guys bright and early on friday morning hopefully you guys have a great happy and safe wednesday it is hump day two more days till payday i'll catch you guys later on let's go raid miss randy hipper say hello if you can't stick around at least hit that like button i appreciate you guys i will catch you guys on the next one peace out I totally forgot. Why do 28% of you not have at least 0 0.0025 Bitcoin? Please, please, not financial advice, but at least put a couple hundred bucks into it. At least you'll thank me later, In like 30 years, just hold it. Peace, peace. It's like 150 bucks, stop being cheap. Eat shit, Gary.